make a move on the topic and everyone is interested the, the law's suit or i don't know the law or i don't know whether they're just there as lobbying i'm also here to also educate myself about what Skapak is doing in terms of the law suit and ask all the questions on facebook and one question i'm going to ask is that Dr. Julia, is there actually a lawsuit still going on? No, there has, there has never been a lawsuit. And there is no lawsuit. So, SCAPAC, as I said, is a public affairs committee created to lobby for the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroon. Uh, there are two aspects in our approach, diplomatic and legal. And they are kind of intertwined. We have engaged in the diplomatic offensive first. At some point, there may be a lawsuit, but we can actually achieve independence without needing a lawsuit. Our central focus right now is to make the freedom of Southern Cameroon part of the U.S. foreign policy. And that means lobbying the United States government and all the international uh, bodies that matter. We are already taking off in this effort. Uh, we have a meeting uh, already scheduled this week in New York with Amnesty International. I cannot reveal dates. Uh, we already have the State Department uh, uh, accepting uh, to meet uh, with uh, representatives of Southern Cameroons. Uh, we are still trying to nail down uh, a date for that. And there are a series of other meetings coming up. Uh, there are also uh, different levels of the United States government that uh, we will be meeting uh, over the next uh, few weeks to months. And uh, there are some details in our dip diplomatic offensive that I cannot release uh, uh, to the public because, I mean, you don't, La Republic is out there listening to us and uh, you don't reveal strategy uh, that much, but this is what we have engaged in now is a diplomatic offensive. Uh, a lawsuit, or I mean, the, the whole idea of lawsuit was actually uh, put out there uh, mostly by the detractors. Uh, as I said, a lawsuit can be part of this. But right now, we have not filed any lawsuits because we think the diplomatic route will be faster and we may not even need the lawsuit, a legal route, like filing a lawsuit at the ICJ, which is very time consuming and actually very expensive. Okay. So I just want us to have this clear because I heard one of the leaders saying clearly on air that there is no lawsuit, that Kakum is lying to people. They've, got, they've taken their money and they say there is a lawsuit. There's actually no lawsuit going on. So what you're telling me today, and I want the viewers to hear it clear, that there is a, a diplomatic offensive. That is what we paid the retainer fee for, but not we did not pay for a lawsuit. Is that what it is? Please, can you clarify this too? Because I think yes. I don't want the viewers to leave here thinking there is no lawsuit at all. There's uh -huh. no lawsuit being, there's no retainer. Just make it clear so we all go home with a sound. So we we retain fully half for their services. Okay. which include legal, diplomatic aspect. The retainer fee is for their services. It is not uh, split into different things that they can do. When you, hi when you hire a representative, a lawyer or an advocate, you present your problem, then let them propose the solution because that's why you went to them, the expert. So uh, the retainer fee it's actually not money that we were paid them. The retainer fee is a, it's a fee that we give them to put in an escrow account. So an escrow account basically guarantees them that there's money for their services. 
But they cannot take that money without our authority. So uh, when they perform any service, they give a statement of what has been done. And we know this and this amount will be taken out of that is of that money. So that retainer fee is there. Uh, so far, we have received a, a statement uh, of uh, about 3,600, uh, and that was for, uh, I think that was for setting up uh, the initial services that were, were done. Uh, and after that, the different meetings we have, we had, we have had a few meetings, uh, video conferences, and they are working now on uh, these uh, diplomatic offensives. And of course, we will be expecting to get another statement uh, of services. But this money is there. Uh, it's not like all the 35,000 is gone uh, in the account. No, it's in an escrow account, it's a protected account uh, that they perform a service. They send out a, like a bill. They agree that, okay, we approve this bill, or if we don't agree, we negotiate the bill, then we cut it down and say, okay, <clears throat> this amount is what we know is going to be taken out of that account. But our own account, like SCAPAC account, is us. Okay. We use this account uh, for the services that I already uh, explained to you, like paying the bills of uh, uh, the uh, different groups, feeding the prisoners, taking care of the refugees. And again, I must specify that uh, decision to release any money comes through a vote after a request for project by SCAP. Okay. So on the side of this lawsuit, if I want to explain what I understand, so my viewers will understand exactly what you're saying, is that there was a retainer fee that was signed off the, the day it was signed off. It wasn't actually handed to Foley Hawk and say, this is $35,000. Here you go. Run with it. No, yeah. but it was actually kept in the coffers where whatever services they do, they give you a statement and they take, let's say, hundred dollars you go in there you take a hundred dollars and three thirty four thousand nine hundred dollars is still in there exactly. as you go so if i want to ask you a question back how much money do you think they've taken so far from that thirty five thousand dollars for the services that have rendered us and can you be if you can tell us what services have they rendered to merit them this amount of money they've taken so this is a two-part question yeah. how much money can you tell us that it's been, t it's been taken out of the 35,000 bank account money and what services have they rendered to merit them get that amount of money? Yeah, they have, uh, I think we have received just one statement of $3,600. Uh, so that is what has been taken from the account as of date. But uh, the initial services was uh, for uh, creation of SCAPAC and also all the uh, meetings and uh, video conferences and all the uh, uh, documentation that uh, they have prepared uh, to uh, uh, target these different uh, organizations or uh, different levels of government at the United States. Uh, different levels of the U.S. government. Okay. Um, I just want to, to, before I ask the next question, I want to bring the viewers in this discussion because I know it's something they want to be part of and they love to. Can people please drop your questions in the comment section? I will take a few questions to the chairman. So keep writing your questions. If I don't see them, I will pick them later on. Just write the question. Please make it brief so I can see it and I'll ask it to the chairman. This is the chairman of the SCAPAC board and not the chairman of the governing Council. Um, he's here to answer all questions, Scapac, and all question Foley Hawk. So the lawsuit. So he's told us today that there is no lawsuit. We are we are playing a diplomatic offensive, and I want to throw the question back to him. Do we really need a lawsuit to sue La Republic for all the damages or the losses we've incurred in the course of this struggle?
A lawsuit may be needed or may not be needed right now. For example, if if we have a judgment at the International Court of Justice that our public is illegally occupying our territory, the ICJ does not have the means to enforce that. So it still has to fall back to the political and diplomatic efforts to muscle them out of our territory. Uh, they may, they, that could help. That could help. For example, that is the case uh, of uh, uh, East Timor. East Timor uh, was colonized by the Portuguese, uh, and after the poor, uh, it's, a, it's a small uh, territory uh, neighboring to Indonesia. So uh, they were lucky that their colonial masters, the Portuguese, were interested to make sure they are free. So when the Portuguese pulled out, the, the government of Indonesia walked in and occupied their territory, claiming that it belongs to them, just as La Republic walked into serving Cameroons. And they resisted, and the government, the Portuguese government, uh, helped them to file a lawsuit at the ICJ. The ICJ made that ruling that the, the, the Indonesian government does not have any jurisdiction in their territory, and they use that judgment to help their diplomatic offensive. Now, because we don't have that much resources, if we had million dollars in the coffers, we'd probably attack both sides, file a suit, get let that be going at the ICJ, then do the diplomatic offensive. But we are kind of prioritizing now. Okay. Do we go both or do we do the diplomatic offensive first? Then at some point, even if we succeed diplomatically uh, to to get our country back, we may still need to file a lawsuit against the Republic to claim everything they extorted from us. So uh, let me go back and say we have that option to do uh, because the ICJ is the highest jurisdiction uh, that we have to sue our public uh, on territorial grounds. Uh, in terms of speaking of international litigation, uh, and we have that option. So we have the diplomatic and legal option. We can do both. We have the means to do it. But if you want to prioritize the diplomatic offensive, is better. And this is the reasoning and the advice from our legal representation uh, or our lobbying firm. Once we make the freedom of Southern Cameroons a U.S. foreign policy, it will be easy from there. And Southern Cameroonians have the intellectual capital in the United States and across the West to make that happen. Okay. So we have started that since this struggle started 56 years ago i don't think we've had the leverage we have now to make these things happen so we are because all they talk about the torture the discrimination marginalization has been limited to our community okay the world out there doesn't know about it and if people don't know about it, nothing really happens. Because the way the Western society functions is they have government of the people. If the people don't talk about it, nothing is done about it. Southern Sudanese fought for over two decades. And it was only after they realized we need to do something. We need to find a way for the international community to listen to us when they engaged Foley Hawk. And Foley Hawk had been through that process to lobby and make the freedom of Saudi Sudan a U.S. foreign policy. And through that leverage, they were able to influence the United Nations to create a commission for referendum. It is not the war that forced Omar El Bashi to grant a referendum, no. It is true lobbying. At, higher levels of the UN and the US government. 
That is the same approach we are taking. And I think so far we are on a good start. Okay, so uh, everyone now should hear there is no lawsuit for now, not that we can't do it. There is a choice. We have the diplomatic offensive and we have the lawsuit. And to do both, we need money. Because there is no money, we've decided to choose the best option for now, which is diplomatic offenses, which incorporate lobbying. And through this lobbying, we are hoping that they will push the UN to push La Republic to probably give us a referendum and we can vote to leave like we all know no matter how much war you fight it ends up diplomatic and if i want to ask this question people are saying okay that why did they lie to us that there was a lawsuit when there wasn't was it a lie or was it a misconception please can you clarify that it could have been a misunderstanding because at the time, the level of communication uh, between Skabak and Skakov was not that as developed as now. Even knowing the people and talking to them personally, it was just, it was difficult to convey that information. So once the initial uh, contact with Foley Hub came through, and us and Foley Hub being a law firm, everybody just had that idea that it's a lawsuit, which is not really a lie because, as I said, if we have the, the means financially, we will attack the two law, lawsuit, and uh, diplomatic. So I think when, if any of such information as a lawsuit came from SCACO, it, it may have been an honest mistake, assuming that we're going, to, we're going to take the two routes at the same time. Yes. Okay. There was no intention for people that it's a lawsuit. So because at the, time, at the time SCACO put out that information, we are not even signed the retainer agreement. Yeah, but after we signed the retainer agreement, that's when we had broader discussions about strategy. And that's when we decided to go diplomatic first. Okay, so I make it clear to my viewer. By the time all these messages were popping out about lawsuit, they hadn't signed the retainer fee. So right now, people should go home with the notion that we have the two options, the lawsuit and the diplomatic offensive. If you want both, give us money. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. But because there is no money, they've choose the diplomatic offenses route because it's the better option between the two. Not that both is not need of them. It all depends on money. So if before you go out there and start castigating anybody for saying lawsuits, please bring money. We can do both. That's what, from what I understand from Dr. Julius today is, there is still option to do that, but all we need is money. And we say money and money and money in everything in this struggle. So please drop your questions if you want me to ask him. Um, and let us ask the question that doing to educate the people about this lawsuit and everything's capacity, especially how much money do we have? How do people get to find out how many people have contributed, for example? How many people have registered for citizens levy? How much money is left? How much, how much money is spent? How that is information? Uh, by doing what we're doing now, uh, I kind of gave a, a brief, <clears throat> an approximate uh, range of figures about the total collections. Uh, 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 spending and the net in the account right now. Uh, in terms of specific line by line deposits and uh, and uh, disbursement, it is something that I mean nobody wants to put their account on the website. So, serving Cameroonians who have who have organized themselves in groups. For example, Southern Cameroonians in Boston do have copies 
so Scapa Prince is a come and give them. Uh, the account uh, details, like the account statement, is shared with the SACO uh, committees, committee heads. So the different organs, uh, I believe if the head of Southern Cameroonians in, in the UK or in, the, in every group in, request for this thing is going to come in an email, then they will share it to their people in the meetings. But it's not something you want to put on WhatsApp, for example. Okay. In terms of the number of people who have registered, uh, I, I will encourage you to invite the webmaster for this uh, website uh, to give us details on that because I'm also curious to know. Okay. So now everyone knows that um, from what we've heard today, just to touch back on what he said, we SCAPAC has received close to 100 thousand dollars they've paid bills here and there they've put thirty five thousand down as down payment for the for the diplomatic offensive which that money hasn't been used I've seen some in his name is Terry Apopo is saying here that they've only used three thousand six hundred dollars for the SCAPAC account or the money that was saved for the retainer, the retainer, the retainer fee. fee. So only 3600 has been given to Foley Hawk. So we still have about 331400 in, in the retainer fee, yes. In the retainer fee. Still That's different, different from the SCAPAC account. Different from the SCAPAC account. That one is in the escrow account. Okay, so so the escrow account still has $31,400 left. They've only paid Foley Hawk's three thousand six hundred dollars for the work they've done since the retainer was signed up till now please can we know just a bit of the work that they've done for three thousand six hundred dollars please so everyone is clear oh i thought i already uh, answered that question yeah but some people are still asking yeah so they have to set up a uh, scapac or the articles of organization and uh Articles of operation and all the work and uh, lobbying work at the level of the U.S. government uh, that they have done to secure us appointments <coughs> with the State Department, uh, also securing appointments uh, with the Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee, um, all the uh, uh, talking points. Uh, and uh, negotiations and contact meetings with uh, the Amnesty International mm -hmm. and the Human Rights Watch that we're going to meet this week. Um, so they, those, those, before they do these things, they sit down and, and review uh, piles and piles of documents and videos that we submitted to them. And this takes time for them to look at that and prepare all the, 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 the talking points uh, that we're going to use for these meetings. So they prepare us to go for this meeting. So this, this is why we're paying them. For okay. And we by ourselves, you see our case for restoration is clear. But why are we still on the annexation? Because nobody listens to us. So we need somebody to lobby for us. Okay, so from, from what I've, I've gotten for you, from you so far, it means our case is so clear that we only need, mostly for now, diplomatic and some lobbying. When we fully get our country back, do we have the option of suing the Republic for all these damages that they've done to us in the past 60, 55 years? or since the struggle started. Do we have that leverage to do that? We do have that leverage. We have the option to sue them anytime. I think we should, and I think we will do that. Okay. But it's not as important now as in getting our country back. Yes. Uh, so, a, a declaration from the ICJ we had to our diplomatic offensive, <clears throat> a comprehensive report from Amnesty International, we mm -hmm. add 
to our offensive. So all these things will add up. Human Rights Watch. Mm -hmm. add, these are organizations with credibility. However, to go through the legal process at the ICJ is time consuming and very costly. But to arrange a meeting with Amnesty International is way less time consuming and required a few phone calls and maybe some uh, 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 meetings between uh, Foley Hawk and this organization for us to have this meeting. So that is a cheaper and a very effective uh, way if I want to do cost benefit. So Foley Hawk advise us to follow that route first. So I'm going to ask the question now on the two uh, parts. Now you, a few people in America are doing all this work with the lawsuit. Now we have a, we have a new governing council. Are they going to join you guys to continue this work or they will take another, another channel while you guys continue with our work now that we have a new governing council? The governing council is directing what we're doing. Okay. So this is a policy, or this is an offensive directed by the governing council. Okay. So the governing council is aware of what's going on. The governing council decides who attends these meetings. When the governing council comes to the US, they will be attending these meetings with these organizations. So the, 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 represent, the delegation of Southern Cameroonians to these meetings next week was picked by the government council. Okay. So that all, everyone is... All, all, of course, we make recommendations and they, the government council has uh, 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 the final uh, decision as to who attends this. So this is not uh, this is not so Skapak is not functioning uh, with legally because Foley Hub has to have a client, an entity registered in the United States. So legally Foley Hub is considering SCAPAC as a client, then SCAPAC has its uh, allegiance and board members be, uh, being decided by SCAPO. So SCAPAC is not functioning as an independent organization from SCAPO. SCAPAC is functioning as an organ, as an organ of SCAPO. Okay. Uh, the account is the treasury of Southern Cameroons and Southern uh, Cameroon's governing council is exercising its diplomatic offensive in the United States through SCAPAC. Uh, there's Bison B here asking that who pays you, Dr. Julius, Tabe, for uh, all the work that you do? Yeah, in this struggle, in this struggle, we have to completely scrap the idea of salary. There is no payment of salary in a revolution. Okay. Any money that comes in has to be used for common good. If we have refugees in Nigeria, we say if we have two thousand dollars to send, we send for everybody. We don't say we're going to pay this person this amount of salary. So all what we are doing here in the United States is volunteer work. We'll be going to New York next week. We pay our hotel out of our pocket. We pay our flight out of his volunteer work. We, we don't get paid. In the revolution, you have to sacrifice. Okay. That sounds good to me. And it sounds fun in my ears. 
So why is it that you people are doing all this work voluntarily? And we are we are all encouraging everybody to contribute to this account where it's so accountable. Honestly, all my questions I have in my head have been answered and I'm quite satisfied. If I wanted to ask you yourself, being in the shoe, going to all these meetings, are you satisfied with the work Foley Hawk is doing for representing the people of Southern Cameroon? I am very satisfied. I think uh, the what we have achieved in you know, for over how many years we've had all these modern organizations, mm -hmm. uh, nothing has happened. But we are already penetrating uh, levels of the U.S. government within a few months. Um, I think I'm very satisfied with what we are doing. And I am 100% confident that we will be free. Uh, freedom doesn't come in a day. So people, the, people have to manage their expectations. Uh, it's not going to be two, one, two, three months or uh, Southern Cameroon is going to be free now. It's going to take time because our co the colonial government of the Republic will resist. Mm -hmm. And this is going to take time, but I am 100% confident that we will prevail. Falsehood has never prevailed over the truth. It's going to take some time, but we will succeed. So, so um, I think B Song B is still asking that is there an estimated time that people can have in their head? Like, let's say, if we want to say in six months, do you think in six months, in a year, Southern Cameroons will be free? If I was to tell my friend who's been joining me to help me fight this fight, that how long can they talk with me to fight this to see a result? Well, um, when we signed the retainer agreement, that question came up. And the fully hard representative there, who has had experience in dealing with these issues in international litigation with Saudi Sudan, Kosovo, uh, kind of estimated that uh, it may take up to like five, five years for the whole process to complete. Uh, it could be sooner, it could be later. But it doesn't mean things will stay the same for five years. It means at some point, uh, I'm not sure when, a uh, few months, about a year, at some point we're going to gain the momentum to be able to manage things ourselves on the ground uh, and having La Republic coming out down from the high horse and actually listen to some of the things we want. So the whole process, for example, just the time to create a commission for referendum to actually get in a referendum, it may take about two years. We want to get to that first. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to recognize, is for the international community to recognize what is going on. We don't, we don't think that, that, is, that has really happened. So we have to make sure that it has happened go through the, the corridors of the United Nations and we believe that the weight of the U.S. government on that will make it easier. Once we achieve that, I think the rest will be smooth. It's hard for, for me to give timeline, but I'm just going to go by the timeline uh, given by Foley Hawk on the day of the retainer agreement that it may take about five years. But I believe we will be having updates on how things are going. Right now, the update I have, which I think is good, is that we have important meetings with these organizations at these levels of the U.S. government. We'll be updating our people the outcome of these meetings and what the next step is. Okay, I think I think that sounds to me like a great plan, and it gives me encouragement. But I want to know why is it that most of our leaders, frontline leaders, are resisting this um, diplomatic offensive? Oh, I keep hearing it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We need AK. We need A this. We need A that. What is it that is scaring them? Or what is it that is that is not good about this lawsuit? Please be honest with us. 
Again, there is no lawsuit yet, so it's just a diplomatic uh, offensive. In terms of why these people are resisting, I'm not sure uh, because, uh, as I said, we want everybody to come up with ideas on how to free us. Some of these organizations have been existing for uh, about 20 years. I'm very sure if they had great ideas, they could have freed us a long time ago. Exactly. So what, what I will uh, call upon them to do is keep on doing what we are doing as long as it's moving towards the freedom of serving Cameroons. And don't spend your energy trying to discredit another group of Southern Cameroonians who are also working on their own strategy. It is waste of resources and time. So I will encourage the AGC and NCY to focus on their own strategy. What they think they can do to really to free us. If they free us, it's good and fine for everybody. They should not spend too much time trying to discredit what we are doing. Okay, so I'm going to ask you. I'll be wrapping down. So if people have more questions they want me to ask, please drop in uh, down in the comment section. I'll be reading them. I'll just ask you a question that's come to my head because it's something that is hot right now on the table. It's about school resumption. Is there any link between the the diplomatic offensive lawsuits and SCAPAC and the school. Is there anything that can help to prevent schools or to help to delay us? Just anything because people want to know. People are eager about this. Or maybe from your own point of view, what do you think about school resumption in Southern Cameroon? Uh, I'm speaking for myself. Okay. And I think that if we went on strike and resisting uh, the mistreatment of our people, uh, the infiltration of our educational system, our legal system, uh, and in that process, a lot of our leaders are arrested, our children are arrested, uh, detained, or not even arrested, abducted, and detained in concentration camps in La Republique du Cameroon. Then all of a sudden we say, okay, let's go back to school. What about those in jail? Are they not supposed to go to school as well? So I, I think the resistance should continue. Uh, however, uh, the policy on resumption of school and the overall approach on going forward uh, will be coming from the Governing Council and uh, hopefully in the next uh, uh, next few days to weeks. Okay. Um, Ernesto Atem is asking a question that will SCAPAC fund an armed resistance if SCAPAC was to go down that route? Uh, every people have the right to defend themselves. Okay. If the governing council creates a Department of Defense, mm -hmm. and there is a request for funds for self I believe the funding will still follow the same route, and it's going to be something legal. The Republic cannot consider that fight, uh, supporting terrorism. It's going to be a self-defense funding. Okay. So everyone can hit, everyone sure I've heard that Stapak is, if Stakuf was to put, to say we should defend ourselves, which is a right in international law, self-defense, they are happy to fund this. So nobody should go around saying Stakuf does not support self-defense. That is a lie. And a big lie, and you've heard it today. So I'm going to ask you. I think one of the last questions I will be asking you is, how do people get updates? Because I think if it's taking too long, I'm going to take some responsibility for it because I'm supposed to be the communication for Skakov. But some of this information I get to find out on the TV, like 
today, which I don't think is right. And I think the people want to be updated at, at every given point on what is going on. Because that is what keeps the fire going. What is the best possible solution to this? Or what can you propose that will all will work for me and work for everyone? For people to get the updates on everything that is going on with, with the lawsuit in terms of the diplomatic offensive that we're doing? Yeah, I think the uh, best way uh, is for all information and updates on the struggle mm -hmm. uh, to come from the governing council, maybe through the spokesperson. Okay. Um, however, uh, shows like this, events like this, uh, are also good. Uh, if we can have this monthly uh, to update the people, uh, depending on what uh, your availability and my availability are. And other members of, uh, other board members of SCAPAC can actually come on as well to explain this thing. But SCAPAC, from the time of its creation, uh, has always uh, updated SCAPO. And actually, the Secretary General of SCACO at the time was, was actually an honorary member of the board and has all these updates. Maybe because he was overwhelmed uh, by too much activity uh, to do and probably did not uh, communicate to the uh, to the rest of the uh, secretariat for the information to filter out. But I think with the new, new structure and all three members uh, of the government council on board and have minute by minute update of what's going on, uh, the spokesperson uh, uh, will convey such updates uh, in a timely manner. And by the way, the spokesperson uh, uh, will be part of the delegation uh, and most of the delegations uh, at this, uh, the, to these different levels of the U.S. government and the international community. Okay. I think from now, if me, I can commit to something, I will be saying that this is the Sunday, so, um, every Sunday show, and I think one of the reasons that pushed me to do this show was I, re I recognized the gap be in communication between Skakuf and the people. And talking to you today has made me maybe a bit proud to know that I chose this show to do and you're just the first to come. I want to bring uh, just a scoop into the next uh, guest that will be here. His name is Robert Fondi. He's one of the Skapak and the uh, Foley Hawk guys. He will be here next Sunday to talk more from his own perspective about the lawsuit. Because I've realized that even in, in all of this, everybody has their own ideologies or perspectives to every situation. So he will be on this show next Sunday to talk about um, his own perspective to this lawsuit. I will also be bringing... No up lawsuit. Remember, no law there is no lawsuit. Oh. Diplomatic offensive, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be also no lawsuit yet. Yet, okay. They say no lawsuit yet. I'm sure that is clear. Please, sorry, my tongue. Let me a cosa na camera no pobia. You see, so there is no lawsuit, but there is a diplomatic offensive going on and a lot of lobbying in it. I will also be bringing the heads of other organs in Skakov to come and tell us what they've been doing since they were nominated. Their names were written on a piece of paper to say they, they owe us a duty to free our country. So I'll be bringing some of them to tell us where we go from here or what they've been doing so people are in loop with what is going on so mr julius i've been it's been fun today talking to you man and we talk to you on the phone it's fun to have a day like this out to to talk is there anything in your mind is there anything in your mind that you want to drop i want to tell our people today in terms of this struggle maybe a word of encouragement because some people are getting tired it's taken some people think it's, it's gone too long is there any encouraging words um the people of southern sudan 
for, for over two decades and the last millions of people. We have to manage our and we should know that freedom does not come in a platform of gold. We have to work for it. We have to sacrifice. So far, the people are doing good. The resistance must continue. People should not get tired. If, if for any reason we fail, we will become the worst slaves in human history. So failure is not an option. Mm -hmm. Let the resistance continue. Kids can go to school when we have freedom. There is no point wasting time and studying infiltrated information and come out without any job. Everything is given to the public. Even right at the University of Boya, Southern Cameroonians have to translate notes from French to English. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what kind of school did uh, I get tired and want to go back to? So this resistance has to continue. People have to be strong and they should know that freedom doesn't come in a day. The reason why we are having the ears and that we are picking steam here is because there is something happening on the ground. If things come back to any near normal or uh, La République feels that they have, they have regained control of our territory the way they, 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 they had prior to the uh, onset of the revolution, then they will go ahead and make noise that everything is fine. And that may uh, 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 slow down uh, our offensive. So the resistance must continue until we eject the colonizers from our territory. Okay, so um, Edwin Former has asked the question, is there a possibility for SCAPAC to borrow money? Hmm. Um, I am not sure. We have, I have never thought of that. Uh, that has not been part of any of our discussions. Hmm. However, it is possible for SCAPAC to raise funds from non southern Cameroonians and other organizations. So, from I think your question has been answered. For for me, if I want to talk about a little bit of of the few, I've not known you for that long. If I just want to throw a bit of light so people know you, and are you on Facebook by any chance? Uh, no. We don't want thousands of followers. Yeah. No I'm not, questions. No, I'm not. I'm not a. Um, I'm not big on social media. Uh, the only thing that brought me into this is my passion for freedom. Uh, so I have, of course, a WhatsApp account. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't have a Facebook account. Okay, so you guys have heard him. He's not on Facebook, but we promise you that we will be bringing talks like this. People will always come from Skapak and Fully Hog, maybe sometimes to tell us what's going on with the lawsuit, just so people are informed. I think I've come to know that information, especially in this country where we are, people want to know. People ask questions all the time. It's a good thing to ask questions. And in reverse, we should be able to give you the answers. That's why we've created a show like this where people can come drop your questions is it if there's anything burning that you have in your mind or you've forgotten something and you think about it later and you want dr julius to still answer your question regarding SAPAC and the foley hall no laws you diplomatic offensive please set facebook page or send it to my um i don't have no number yet but i'll be bringing up a number yeah. But just I, 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 think, I think I would like to, to, to share your Facebook with you. So that's also my own Facebook account. So all the questions okay. can go to you. <laughs> He's and, my face. And I'll answer them. Okay. <laughs> He's sharing my Facebook page. Okay, you can drop your questions. All the questions that are directed to the lawsuit. And, and this lawsuit thing. Eh? Why did they even say lawsuit? Eh? See this too, you know? Okay. <laughs> 
diplomatic offensive. Please don't do like me and be repeating lawsuit, lawsuit. There is no lawsuit for now, but there will be a lawsuit in the future. We need money to do that. Please, I will not end this show by saying. People should register, pay your citizens levy. We've grown to the point where, before I conclude, I would just give Mr. Julius one more chance to say anything that is in his mind that he wants to tell us, and then I will wrap up the show for today and we'll continue next week. Please, Mr. Julius, you have the floor. Number one is money, money, money. Scapac is the most guaranteed place you can keep your money if you want to support the struggle. It is the only place where collection of money from Southern Cameroonians is transparent and where the decision on how much money comes out is made by at least 15 people. Signature the check. Right now, to the check, the treasurer and the resident agent, but Skakuf may decide and make it even three to make it even much harder uh, to even write a check. So it is a guaranteed place. It, it's a process. So uh, even when the, the SCBC request came, they were like, Almost losing patience that the money is not coming fast. Mm -hmm. It's because Capac goes through that process. We we must have the request from SCACO. Mm -hmm. We circulate that request in the board of directors. Mm -hmm. We vote for it, tally the vote before disbursing the money. We follow that process, make sure there's accountability. Okay. Yes. And secondly, no salary. Anybody coming to work for this uh, uh, struggle has to do it volunteer. No salary. Any money that comes in that account will be used for common good. We're not paying any any money. Number three, resistance, resistance, resistance. We are to fight our way out of bondage. Mm -hmm. It's just that a fight trying to fight our way out of bondage from a monster who is bigger than most other monsters. The government of La Republic du Cameroon is actually worse than North Korea. It's, it's the worst government on earth. Unfortunately, the world has not known that, but they will, they will be discovering that in time. Assist uh, the people of Gambia when it was Senegambia broke away from Senegal. The people of Southern Sudan did not even have their own country like us before joining the rest of Sudan, but they succeeded independence. People of Kosovo, people of Eritrea, why not people of Southern Cameroon? We have been resisting just for six months and people are getting tired we should be ready for a long fight and everybody must sit up, make your contributions and know that failure is not an option. I'll Thank leave it there and I'm willing to come on anytime. Thank you very much, Mr. Julius. I think I heard everything that I needed to hear today and I'll be concluding this show to say it was a fantastic time spending time with Dr. Julius Tabe. He is the chairman of um, SCAPAC board and he works with the Foley Hawk diplomatic offensive team. There is a lot of work to do behind the scenes. But the most important thing that we should not forget, no matter all we do, is that we need money in this struggle. We cannot stress that enough. No matter what we, we talk and no matter how many history we've learned or every, all the abuse we've seen on TV, if we don't pay for our freedom, we will never own the outcomes. So we need to donate. Please pay your citizens levy. I don't know how you can sleep at night and see 
all the blood that has been spilled and you it is only twenty dollars people go to the restaurant and spend more than a hundred dollars in a weekend this is twenty dollars that can guarantee see you your identity for life i see some people asking me the question Vena is asking when are we going to be carrying um using our own passport that question today cannot go to dr julius tablet because that is not his area his area is just money and anything the diplomatic offensive i'll be bringing other viewers on this show who will be answering questions like that so save your questions i only ask the questions that are rest that is on the show. Please, this. And there's one thing I'm going to add. Uh, for Please. those who are saying uh, people should go to school, your response to them is those who are in jail, when are they going to go to school? Exactly. When are they going to go to school? So this resistance must continue. For those who are not really. Uh, comfortable going online to contribute. Group yourself into communities, make uh, collections and mail them. You can mail them in your home country from there or in whatever form. You can collect this money and do a wire. So but whatever it takes you have to we have to keep this going. So because Martin Luther said, if you cannot uh, 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 fly, you run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, you crawl. But by all means, you have to keep moving. And he also said that to end, when you sit quiet, and allow yourself to be a perpetual to be in perpetual slavery. If we have dignity as a people, we cannot remain in servitude for eternity. ourselves or lecturing somebody else, it's our objective to fulfill our desire to come up with a consensus. And so we will try to do that deliberately and make sure